Welcome back to another video people and to a bit of a different background. I know that I've said this in the last video, but I was trialing it on my studio this time around. If you follow me on Instagram, you know, I'm not at home. You know that, you know, I'm just been traveling, working on something really important for me. And anyways, that doesn't mean the videos have to stop for the next few videos. Probably you're going to be seeing this background until we go back home. But this is not why we're here. We're here to talk about Fan Ho and some really cool um, techniques or insight from his photography into how we can produce narrative photos, talking about storytelling. So today's video is going to be around that. Um, before we dive into it, today's sponsor is me and Sal, a company that I've been working with. It's a professional lab that I've been working with to produce my prints. My print shop is now open. And if you want to stick around to the, you know, later in the video to learn how um, I've been working with them and stuff that I have to say, also showing you some prints and etc then, you know, stick around and we're going to be talking about it later because for now we're going to be diving into the first narrative technique that Fan Ho used in his photography. Intention is something we've talked about before here on the channel and it's a word I've been mentioning a lot in my videos and Fan Ho talked about this particular subject, especially when he talked about darkroom work and embracing new tools. And when I looked at Fan Ho's pictures and from knowing a little bit about his workflow, I noticed he works with intention when it comes to framing and placing the people in certain areas of the frame, whether that was a result of waiting for someone to go by or simply asking someone to stand in in that position. But his intention is also very clear after taking the images in the darkroom by creating deeper contrasts, cropping and other techniques that allowed him to tell a story. So with Fan Ho, we are reminded that intention is an important key in making a picture and mastering what you want to say with said picture or what story or idea you're communicating is something we should strongly consider when photographing. Now, if you want to know more as well about Fan Ho and his career, his, you know, photography, a more like a sort of general look at his photography. I also have done a video on him before. I'll be leaving a link somewhere around here on the screen. But now talking about mastering or leveraging uh, light and shadow, I think this is pretty basic no matter what you're photographing with subject wise. Um, but I think it's always important to um, not learning how to master or how to leverage uh, light and shadow in your own advantage just particularly like things that happen around you, natural, you know, light. And so looking at Fan Ho's pictures, I can definitely see that he paid a lot of attention to light um, in the way that he also uh, masters textures, contrasts, and etc. And in order to achieve this, I think it's important to notice details, but more than that, to make note of things like the movement of the sun and also when certain activities end or begin so we can get the effects that we want or at least leverage these elements in our own advantage. In my last video about Ansel Adams, I briefly mentioned this app that functions more like a solar watch that tracks movements of the sun and etc. And by checking something like this, you can better plan or have ideas of where or when to photograph to obtain certain effects or elements in your images, making maps of places, for instance, and how they change throughout the day with the movement of light and shadows. Another example, if you want to say have smoke or kind of like an ace to your photos is to pay attention, especially in bigger cities, um, when after the rain or storms, that water comes in contact with the underground pipes, creating then steam. And I've seen countless photographers using this to their own advantage and the images are just beautiful. So noticing these things and making a note of say when people, you know, when streets get busier or when a certain activity starts or ends wherever you live, wherever you want to photograph, it's something that can work in your advantage. Now, one thing that I learned with Fan Ho was on the value of two particular words, doubt and curiosity. Two words we wouldn't necessarily tie to photography. But when I looked at Fan Ho's images, I kind of realized that most of the time what held my attention besides the technical excellence and besides the beauty of the photo itself was the idea that I got curious about, you know, 
examining the image further, examine every single contrast, um, the people in it, and you know just every single detail from textures to you know details of light and shadow, etc. And then doubt about what happened, what's happening next, and what happened before. Where is that person going? What happened to that building? And so this quality is definitely a quality that will make your audience um, more captivated by your images. And these are two terms that are so important because not only they contribute to a strong narrative quality within your images, but also brings the audience in and holds their attention. I'll give you an example in this image right here. The narrative quality of it, it's insane because everything in this photograph or mostly everything is aligned to make you perceive its beauty, but at the same time to hold your attention. The little girl on the right hand side of the foreground, the perspective of the image that converges towards the point where the two buildings intersect and the clothes hanging there, the details of windows, the sign further down, there's a sort of steam or smoke that causes a certain ace and affects the textures, also the textures of pipes and walls, um, the art shape combined with all of the other geometrical forms. It makes you curious, it holds your attention, it makes you want to see more, and it's beautiful. And talking about beautiful, I think it's time to talk about my prints. And yes, I am doing some shameless self-promotion, but I just wanted to talk to you about my print shop and my, um, you know, my prints and etc. And then by no means I'm saying that, you know, my photography is extraordinary or it's comparable to Fan Ho. I'm not trying to do anything like that. Fan Ho is a great master. I have utmost respect for him. And anyways, I wanted to talk to you about my print shop, which is now open. I've been selecting some work and I've been working with Sal, a uh, professional photo lab. I've changed a lot of things around my prints and I'm super happy with how the prints turned out. I'm really, really uh, loving the work that uh, Sal put as well in printing and the care and the quality is insane. So I want to talk to you about the work that I've done with it, their process, because they've honestly made it more simple to do prints these days. And so Sal is present in many countries. And like I've said, they've simplified the whole process of making digital prints. All you have to do is select your images, check the colors. And here, my advice to you would, would be to calibrate or recalibrate your screen before you work on your images, whether that it's color or black and white. I think it's important to calibrate colors in contrast to get everything correctly, especially if you're like me and you're using a normal computer screen and not a specialized screen. You upload your files, you choose your sizes, choose the surface and a few other details that you can customize your own way, and then you can submit it. Once you submit it, you wait a few days and your prints will arrive at your place. And if you have any doubts about papers and if you're looking to make a book or something like that, you can always request samples from Sal. And this was super helpful to me personally. And this is why I've spent so long with the shop closed because I wanted to make sure of the quality of the prints and I wanted to change things for the better. And we're going to have now two finishings available on my website. And I've selected a few images that I've taken along this year from my trips in Ireland, Greece, and the Netherlands. Each order will also get an exclusive, you know, little card with a thank you card and a discount. Uh, previous orders already in the shop had this, but now I've made these little ones, these new ones, um, also with Sal. And um, I just wanted to, you know, share this with you, but I think, uh, I think it really benefited me from, you know, working with them. So links are down below for Sal and for my print shop. And I guess we're now gonna segment into Fun ho and talking about two particular things that I think can be helpful to you as well in producing narrative photos. And 
on this point of geometry of urban landscape, I believe I touched on this before when I talked about Ernst As, who also does this, but in a more abstract way. Here, looking at the images of Fan Ho, there's a clear intent in using the geometry of the available landscape to produce the story of the image he shows us. And in many ways, this geometry is not just a physical geometry of a building or street, but also a perceived geometry of light and shadow. And whilst nowadays this type of imagery, where interplays between geometry, light and shadow are fairly common, they also appear to me quite simplified, whereas Fan Ho presents us images that can have it sometimes less elements and be more simple, like approaching shadows, but he also presents us with some beautiful in more complex cases of geometry of light and shadows and different angles, such as afternoon chat which proves that still today we can learn continuously from observing his technique that has so much to offer. Now guys, I just wanted to quickly make a brief, brief note um, on the importance of faces. I feel like I've seen a lot of photography that looks closer to Fan Ho's, it is inspired by Fan Ho's, even other photographers, popular photographers throughout history, but I wanted to make a note here because I think one of the things that also is very strong about Fan Ho's photography is faces. And I want us to now look uh, at some images and I'm going to be leaving some notes as to what their face, the faces communicate to me. And I think it's important to think whilst we look at these pictures on the importance of showing and not showing a face and what that communicates to the viewer. Of course, Sometimes the distance was much greater and Fan Ho didn't show pictures. But even when people are um, lit in different ways, there's always that care in not making the exposure too dark so that we can see the faces. Now, this point doesn't concern the breaking down of images directly, but it's more of a workflow inspiration tip, if you will, that of course influenced the images Fan Ho produced, and it can also influence yours. Fan Ho was known for taking inspiration from all art forms, from what surrounded him, he read a lot of significant literature and Chinese poetry, which most definitely impacted the narrative qualities of his images. Because when you're reading, there are certain details that certain writers' style encompasses that make you visualize scenes in great detail. And you then start looking at those details and how a certain moment feels when you're around with your camera. And this happened to me particularly with the work of uh, Dostoevsky. I think his descriptions, there was just something deep about it um, that really touched me and made me look at things differently. Um, and with you can work with any of the writer, of course. I'm just making you know, a note about Dostoevsky. And also because on my last video, if you watched on Alexei Titarenko as well, one of my latest videos, um, I talked about the importance of music and how music really connected to his work and how it inspired him and Dostoevsky and etc. So if you haven't, go watch that video because it's really cool. I really enjoyed making that video. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to, you know, close this video for now. I hope it was helpful in any way, shape or form. Write your thoughts down below. Did you enjoy this? Would you like to see this about another photographer? Um, and yeah, uh, I want to thank Sal for supporting the channel, for supporting my work. It truly means a lot. I'll be talking uh, about them as well in future videos um, and making, you know, more notes on the products that they produce. If you're interested, if you know, if you have a friend that is interested in printing work, check out the links down in the description. Um, link to my print shop if you want to pick up a print, of course, if you can, uh, if you want to support in that way, if you're able. I really appreciate it. For me, it's a privilege every time I get a picture from someone that has hanged my work in their house. I think it's a privilege. I think it's a blessing in many ways. And this is why I love what I do. And I really, really appreciate those of you who can support. Um, if you want to join the members as well, you can. We're approaching 50 members, which is insane to me. I really appreciate you all. And But anyways, 
just watching the videos and leaving your thoughts is super, super important to me. And I appreciate that. So I guess that it's goodbye for now. I'll, you know, see you very soon here on the channel or so I hope. And I guess that you need to stay safe, keep shooting, keep creating, keep learning photography and I'm out. Peace. Seen it all, you can all been a fit to Fem for talk, I can't fall in love with you Seen it